Welcome. This video will demonstrate how to set up a new project in TSIM. After you enter some preliminary information, we generally begin by creating or defining a new grid. After we click New Grid, we can then enter the grid dimensions and the dimensions will depend on whether we do a full symmetry, half symmetry, or quarter symmetry. So we apply the thickness, the temperature, and we start off with a low number of elements initially to have the simulation run faster. So here we have our grid, and you can see the uh, elements. We save the grid with some name. and then we browse for it and add it to the project. Now the grid is added, we start to add the tools. The tools have been defined previously and have been positioned. So here we have the tool number one, and in this case we're going to use an assist which will be tool number two, the plug. Next we will create a new process control panel and here we will simply save this panel for now and we give it a name and we save it and then we browse for it and add it into the project. Now at this point we save the project with some name and then when we reopen the process control by clicking edit you'll see that the tools that were in the project have been automatically added and you can see their position, their default zero position in the graphic window. Now we simply have to adjust the movement of these tools and here we'll specify that the assist will move over 200 milliseconds to the um, finishing position which is 111 millimeters above its starting point and it'll essentially stay there for another 300 milliseconds while the pressure is increased in the system. So there you can see the steps in the graphic window, the, the final orientation and position of the tool relative, the assist, sorry, relative to the tool. Now we specify that tool 1 is, a low, is an upper tool and tool 2 is a lower tool so that the contact algorithm can know which side of the sheet the tool is coming from and then we save the project. Next we're going to select the material and from the material that we've added to the folder from the database and then we're going to create a heat and friction data file. Now here we don't have to be very precise about the parameters or numbers that we fill in for the friction coefficient and the heat transfer coefficient because we are simulating just a very short time uh, in this process. However, with thicker sheets and longer process times, we want to be a little bit more careful about what parameters we put here. So now we save the file name as HF, heat and friction, and then we browse for that file and add it to our project. Now that we've added all the files in a project, we can go through and verify that they're all there using the view edit command. So there's the assist, and now we have the uh, process control. You can see that the time is only about a half second in total simulation time. There's the material file, there's our heat and friction, and now we can proceed with solving the project. Now as you can see, because we have relatively few elements, and we'll click the elements, uh, first click the dots here to see the, the dots, the contact points, which are the nodes of the elements, and you can see the different color depending on what tool the dots are being in contact with. And you can see the vacuum come on now, and the simulation is finished. And, and the simulation is relatively fast because we have relatively few elements. However, when you have few elements, you can see that the resolution is not very good. We're having triangles trying to fit around the corners at the bottom of the part. So we're going to refine using the automatic refinement. That 
increases the number of elements four times, then when we close the project, the view window, it asks us to save the, the mesh as a new mesh. So we're going to rename it as we find. Then we're going to open the project again, and we're going to browse and replace the material. There's the project file, and we're going to browse and replace the material with the refined material that has more elements. Now we're going to rerun the simulation. So here's the material file. You can see the refinement. And we're going to rerun the simulation, and you're going to see that the uh, calculation time now is going to be a little bit longer because the software has to deal with more elements. But our solution is going to be a little bit more precise. So once again, there are the contact nodes. So you can see the nodes that are making contact with the assist as well as the nodes that are making contact with the tool. Of course, if we ran quarter symmetry, or even half symmetry, but in this geometry, we could run quarter symmetry and um, run either faster with fewer elements or for the same number of elements, get an even higher resolution because we would be simulating only one quarter of the geometry. Now the uh, plug will move until it reaches the um, 111 millimeters depth after which the vacuum will come on. You can see it there pulling the material off the surface of the plug and touching the tool. Now the forming is finished and it opens up the results view and we can look in and see that the uh, fact that we have a higher density mesh here we're going to make the mesh solid and then we're going to turn on the elements and now that we have a higher density mesh you can see that it follows the contours of the tool more closely. I'll put the transparency back in and um, we're going to take a look at another way of viewing the results and that is the cut window option where we can make a cut at any x, y, or z position. Here we're going to cut at x equals zero and you'll notice that the <coughs> graphics window and the graph are linked to the cursor shows you the position where you are on the graph relative to the part in either the x, y, or z direction and at whatever position you want to uh, you want to put. You can also take this data using the cut data table and copy it into your clipboard to paste it into an Excel spreadsheet and compare uh, identical cut locations for different process conditions or tool designs or materials. So if we go and click the preprocessor here, for example, we can go down to the process control file and we can edit this file by changing the final vacuum pressure. Here we'll double it to 100. We'll save the file again and that will overwrite the previous file. And now we simply close the previous results and rerun the simulation. So in this fashion, you can set up a series of simulations comparing different process conditions or perhaps even tool designs or assist designs and um, the software also has a batch mode which will allow you to run each project that you set up um, separately in a batch file and then come back and compare all of the results to see which condition or tool file or assist design gives you the best po possibility of achieving the results you want. Here we've turned on the um, kind of bounding box to kind of show you the space that the sheet is occupying. And if you look closely down here, you'll see that once we hit the 200 millisecond limit, the vacuum comes on pulling the uh, polymer off the assist and onto the, the tool. And here the simulation has, uh, has finished again, and we can post-process these results by eliminating the transparency and then simply viewing the thickness distribution through the color representation as shown here, or we can make cuts and view the results in more detail. Thank you for your time, and please contact us should you have further questions.